from anything they learned in high school or college. It just comes from somewhere. And you, you said one place might be propaganda from uh, creationists, but that seems to not account for most of the variation. So I just wondered, do you have senses of the other sources of evolution? Is it merely popular culture, or are there... I think popular culture, I think um, this idea that uh, these simple sort of cartoonish images, oh, well, evolution, you know, you have Dennis Miller on television saying, well, if men came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? And people will hear that and say, well, that's a serious criticism. It's, it's not. It's not even a good joke. But that's the sort of information that people are bombarded with. You get someone like... Uh, an Ann Coulter who sells millions of books and uh, just lying about things uh, when it comes to evolution and, co and writing those portions of the chapter with the help of the leaders of the intelligent design movement, then you have powerful propaganda tools that are, that are uh, misinforming people. So yeah, I think popular culture is, is a huge part of it. I apologize, it's, uh, you take, have we already talked about Richard Dawkins? Not at all. Um, well. Um, isn't it the fact that some leading scientists ab actually take a contrary view from what you're suggesting tonight, which is that science is neutral on the existence or not existence of God, and that the intelligent design proponents argue that they're making an inference from the best evidence, and the um, Richard Dawkins and those who share his view argue that they draw another inference from that same evidence, and 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 they don't. They, they're, they, from what I can see, refuse to say this is, you know, we are beyond science. We are not scientists. They think that that they are still talking as scientists. And isn't that really just the the flip side of what the intelligent design movement? And 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 how are we to deal with the scientists like Dawkins who insist that this is a scientific argument when when taken that far? Is, well, I, I, I would say the response is, and I, I'm not sure I agree that Dawkins says that his, his atheism is a scientific proposition, but um, I think what he, what he has argued is that uh, there's, there's no uh, proof of God's existence, no evidence whatsoever. Um, personally, I don't see how that even challenges a, a religious worldview, because if faith has any meaningful definition, it's belief without evidence. So you know, I'm not even sure how Dawkins' position conflicts with that. But uh, I think what came out in the Kitzmiller versus Dover trial was the notion that uh, science is neutral on questions of, of God and religion, and that uh, in, in remaining neutral, uh, it um, It's not skirting a conflict, it's just addressing different questions. And it's staying within a sphere that doesn't invoke the natural. It doesn't invoke um, the inferences of whether or not God exists or doesn't exist. It's irrelevant to, the, to a scientific question. Uh, you can draw what inference, inferences you may. Um, what the evidence seemed to show for intelligent design's position is that it wasn't an inference at all, that we're, they were talking about a supernatural intervention in nature. And that by definition, that became uh, a religious idea, whether you called it God or you called it something else. Um, I'm not sure how to, how, how to go with, it, with, with Dawkins' idea there, but he's, uh, he's stirring the pot. He wants to stir the pot because uh, he, he feels that the, uh, atheists uh, have been discriminated against and have been a, a oppressed minority for too long, and by golly, he's going to going to speak out. And other scientists feel like, all right, Richard, now please be quiet. <laughs> so, and I don't even want to get into it. Yes. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I think I've. I remember there are some books here. I, one is by Dawkins. I, I think it's called The Making of the Fittest. I don't know whether he wrote it or anyway, but. Anyway, the author was pointing out that part of the problem is, like, a lot of people take the line of logic that something either is or isn't, like if something, you know, there's no such thing as being half pregnant or whatever, or something is is either a dime or whatever, but they tend to look at knowledge in discrete little units rather than seeing anything any, anything ever really change, and that people, because of that, that's one of the reasons they have such a hard time with uh, any process like evolution. and. I'm just wondering, do you think it's on the part of believers, or they say they're believers, is, is it insecurity? I mean, they, they, also, they actually have to have God or either in a man or some form come down and actually play 
physical with the earth and mold a man or a creature and something in order to, to make it valid. Otherwise, it's you can't say it happened by any other process by evolution. In terms of a creative process, I mean. Ah, that's. Uh, you know, there's a whole group of um, scientists who call themselves theistic evolutionists, and uh, the, so they, they they would argue that if they believe in a god, they created evolution, and then uh, it's sort of a deistic philosophy, you know, or even an ancient Greek philosophy where the prime mover sets things in motion, and then. Uh, steps away and lets lets matters unfold. Uh, uh, there was some testimony that was really interesting and in, uh, that critis uh, ended up being critical of intelligent design. Uh, uh, that um, I believe it was likened to idolatry or perhaps it was blasphemy. You know, there's this idea that we can recognize a design in nature uh, because we can recognize man-made design. And um, so if I uh, well, the classic example is if we see Mount Rushmore, we know that's designed. We know that's not a geologic feature. And intelligent design is saying, so if we see this uh, same kind of uh, design in, in nature, we, we know that that is a mark of intelligence. And some religious people might say, well, that's blasphemy. It's, it's how arrogant you think just because you can recognize human design, you can recognize God's design. So uh, there was a suggestion that intelligent design was reducing God to a little tinkerer who has to put a bacterial flagellum in place, you know, and then go over here and, and stick something into another cell here, whereas um, other views might, might suggest that if there is a God, he must be a little grander than a tinkerer. So... That was one of the criticisms of intelligent design that emerged. Uh, would you say the belief that uh, science and religion don't don't clash is just wishful thinking? Because this gentleman gave the example of the paleontologist that believes in both the young Earth and all the evidence for paleontology, which goes back millions of years. There's a conflict in that belief there, and and the belief that you have scientific evidence will never clash with your religious beliefs is. Is, is just wishful thinking because if you have evidence, you have to take it in and apply it to your beliefs. I agree with you. I think it, it is wishful thinking. <laughs> now, what's wrong with wishful thinking? Uh, we, it depends on your religious belief. society on wishful thinking. Science will, <laughs> scientists will say they don't deal in belief. They deal in data, evidence, and explanations for it. Uh, and that uh, <clears throat> A scientific theory is all about whether or not it can be falsified. It can never be fully proved, or in many cases can't. Evolution in particular is a historic science. We can't go back, play tectonics. We can't go back and prove the formation of the, of the continents unfolded the way the theory. We can't go, we can see pretty far back in time with our telescopes, but the exact uh, cause and, and moments of the Big Bang, if it, if it occurred the way scientists believe it does, we're not going to be able to historically prove that theory. Um, so uh, there's always going to be room for saying it's just a, a theory. But uh, we don't try and falsify our religious ideas. And or most people don't. The idea of the devil's advocate notwithstanding was, it was, a, was a Catholic idea, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we don't really, well, Americans don't really like to see that kind of critical analysis of their religious beliefs that many demand for things like evolution. And um, it's a bit of a double standard when you think about it. If a school board had mandated a lesson plan where the superintendent and assistant superintendent would go class to class pointing out how all the flaws in Christianity, that community would have been up in arms, right? Uh, but nobody even thinks of doing that. And it would be inappropriate to do that, but it's really quite analogous to what the school board did to the theory of evolution. And back. All right, with the intelligent design, it, it purports to be pretty neutral, right? As far as we're saying that there's something else out there, but they're saying they don't know where it comes from. So how challenged have they been on their willingness to accept all other, like other religions? In other words, if you're going to introduce it, say they get their way, are they willing to say, like, okay, well, we're going to say it could be Hindu, it could be Muslim, it could be whatever? 